Okay, gonna have a look at another pupil examination. So let's go to the quiz. Let's have a look at this one. So even before we start changing the lights or anything, there is an obvious difference in the pupil sizes. Um, so this is a nice Socoria. Um, and when you're faced with difference in pupil sizes, the first question is whether or not the, the anisocoria is greater in light or darkness, so-called photopic or scotopic lighting. So with the lights on, that's photopic, and with the lights off, that's scotopic. So as I've switched off the lights there, this left pupil is opened up, and the right pupil has stayed large. I made them small again. Again, the left pupil has changed, but the right pupil has stayed large. And let's just see whether these pupils are reacting. So as I shine the light at this side, the other eye is not changing, is it? And this the patient's right pupil is not reacting with direct light, but the left eye does react. So that says to me that the afferent pathway, the light going in, is intact. It's the efferent pathway, the light, the, the signal coming back to the eye that is somehow not working. Um, and the eye, oh, and the there won't be an RAPD because this pupil will just stay fixed. So, are the pupils normal or abnormal? So that's an abnormal right pupil, isn't there? And is there an anisocoria in the light or dark? Well, the anisocoria is most visible when the lights are on. So with the lighting on, this pupil is small, but this pupil is large. Um, does each pupil react to light? No, the right pupil doesn't react to light. Is there an RAPD? No. What kind of defect is this? Well, this is a right madrasis. This is a dilated right pupil. What would you expect the vision to be in the affected eye? Well, this defect is an efferent defect from the signal coming back out to the eye rather than the light going in from the eye to the brain. So you wouldn't necessarily associate this kind of defect with any change in vision. Um, however, when people do have a dilated pupil, obviously it can make them... Um, it, the, the signal that causes a pupil to constrict is linked to the focusing of the ciliary muscle. So if, for example, you've got a dilated eye because you put eye drops in an affected eye, um, people often get slightly blurry vision in that eye uh, and they can often be a little bit photo photophobic or photosensitive in the eye because the pupil's large. So sort of blurred vision, mild photophobia. Sometimes people get sort of a slight headache with it as well. Um, this would just simply be if you imagine someone had got dilating drops. And then, what would be the single most useful test? Um, so, let's have a look. Um, in terms of tests, th there's several different tests that you can do. Um, what the test that I've said would be most useful would be to try using pilocarpine. Um, so pilocarpine makes um, pupils constrict. Um, and if you have something called an Aedes pupil, um, you can get um, a denervation supersensitivity. So you can use one drop of 1% pilocarpine that's been diluted with eight drops of saline and then put one drop of that dilute mixture into the eye. And you can see a useful constriction reaction um, even to this very weak um, pilocarpine. So that would be suggestive of um, denervation supersensitivity. Um, it does have problems using uh, pilocarpine because you can get denervation supersensitivity with um, denervation, in other words the third nerve palsy or something can actually call, sometimes react to dilute pilocarpine. And the other thing is that the denervation supersensitivity can take some weeks to develop so it doesn't necessarily help you with a long-standing dilated pupil, uh, sorry with an acute onset dilated pupil. So you would um, have to wait for some time for it to become super reactive to 
dilute pilocarpine. Um, if you put normal strength pilocarpine in 1% pilocarpine, um, you can tell whether or not the eye has simply been dilated with atropine or tropicamide or cyclopentylate because um, pilocarpine will not overcome those drops, um, whereas other types of nerve problems such as a third nerve palsy, the pupil would constrict. Um, so it's a useful test if you find someone who's got a, a dilated pupil but there's no other features, for example, of a third nerve palsy, so there's no ptosis um, and there's no diplopia, the eye's not deviated down and out, um, then if the pupil doesn't move at all with atropine, then you've probably proved that the patient might have inadvertently got some belladonna from working, you know, gardening and exposure to plants with um, the uh, is it vinca alkaloid action that, that's, um, I'm, I'm going out of my knowledge, but then, you know, things like the deadly nightshade plant will cause this dilated pupil. Um, so, in terms of an Aedes pupil, we have actually got a, a sort of animation of what an Aedes pupil can look like. So if we go to Aedes pupil here, all this was showing is if you get someone with an Aedes pupil to really focus in on a target, this right eye is very slowly constricting. So as we start off, the right eye is dilated, but if we wait 30 seconds, it's gradually, gradually getting smaller and smaller. So it's it's tonic, it's got tone, it's it's stiff. Um, and then that stiffness, if we wait until it's small and then we take the target away and we let the normal pupil dilate, that same stiff pupil is now again spending a long time dilating again. So it's slow to constrict and slow to dilate. And actually this animation with it constricting and dilating over 30 seconds is actually a lot quicker than it might be in real life. In real life you might need to sit someone you know focusing in on a near target for five minutes to get the pupil to constrict down. Um, the other thing that's very helpful in this sort of setting is actually to examine the pupil up close because there is other things that you can see when you examine on a slip out. You can see tears to the pupil sphincter muscle or you can see um, in an Aedes pupil you can see a sort of constriction effort, a sort of um, vermiform, worm-like constriction effort of the pupil edge and sort of flattening of the, of the pupil border. And, and these are other clues that are helpful to indicate you've got an Aedes pupil. So that's a bit about an Aedes pupil, the cause of a madrasis, dilated pupil. I'll stop there. Hope that's helpful.